All right, x-ray circuit. So we already talked about our x-ray tube and the parts and how the x-ray is produced, but we have to power the x-ray. Um, so what I'd like you to do is get out a picture of your x-ray circuit, block all the words, and see if you can label it. Do you know what the parts are? Do you know what they do uh, and where they're located? And that's pretty much what we need to know about the circuit. We don't have to go wild. Your electrical supply, the incoming power, is alternating current. And all three of your transformers also work off of alternating current. So the, it's AC coming in. And about 220 volts is your incoming power. You have a main power switch, which if you've looked at any of your x-ray rooms, there's a big black switch on the wall. Um, and then there's fuses and a circuit breaker here to protect your equipment from excessive current um, located all on the primary side, so your initial entrance to the circuit. There is a line voltage meter, which is sometimes called line voltage compensator. And it does what's in the name. It compensates. All right, it's going to measure the incoming line voltage. And if it detects a surge or a drop, it's going to maintain those 220 volts for the auto transformer. And that's the first transformer that we hit in the circuit. Your auto transformer is um, the first transformer we hit. It has one coil. It operates on self-induction because it's lonely. It doesn't have any friends. It's a coil all by itself. Again, it works off of alternating current. We are selecting our KV here, not producing it. Watch that word. So we're selecting our KV, and it's going to determine the, um, the kilovolt meter here is going to determine the voltage being sent up to the step up transformer. So I want you to think auto is self. It's also selecting my KV. Just underneath your auto transformer is something called the MA selector or the Rio stat. So we're going to go there next. So we just selected our KV at the auto transformer. We're going to select our MA at, it's either going to be called the MA selector or a Rio stat. And I think MA selector is too easy. So we're going to go with Rio stat. Okay. This also makes me think of a thermostat, <laughs> right? If you think MA and you think thermionic emission, that filament heats up, we're determining our MA setting. It might help you think, turn up the heat, rheostat kind of sounds like thermostat. It's also called a variable resistor, okay? Um, someone taught me sort of think of like a dimmer on a light switch, like how much intensity do you want, okay? So we did our KV selection, our MA selection, and now we're going to go to the other two transformers for the next part, okay? The first one that we hit, up here on the top is the step up transformer. And I want you to think it's it's right after the KVP meter. It's going to turn my volts into kilovolts. The step up transformer works off of mutual induction because there's two wires. Okay, so the step up and step down have friends. There's two of them. They have a primary and a secondary side. The step up means there's more windings of the coil on the second side than on the first side. It's increasing. So we're going to bump our volts to kilovolts up here. And then we're going to go down to the bottom one. The step down transformer, again, two wires, mutual induction. It's going to decrease my voltage, but it increases my amperage. Sometimes this step down transformer is also called the filament transformer. If you think filament, thermionic emission, it's right next to my MA selector. They kind of go together. If you look at the windings here, there's more windings on the primary side than the secondary side. So we're stepping down. Okay. Then before we can hit our x-ray tube, we have to change our current from alternating current which all three of the transformers work off of, to direct current. Our x-ray tube uses direct current, so we need something that's going to change that. And that's your rectifier. In some pictures, it looks like a diamond, and I think those are easier to identify. And they have the um, four triangles that are going to move it into one direction, so AC to DC. 
Sometimes these things are called semi uh, solid state diodes and you should have four of them. The rectification is either a half wave rectification or a full wave. So the half wave has the big open spaces here. And we don't like that. Full wave, but I'm still getting a ripple here. As your equipment has improved over time, we started with single phase equipment and then we went to three phase with a six pulse. So we had more pulses involved. Then we went three phase 12 pulse. Again, more pulses, less drop. Your newest, and I think all the equipment you're working on is high frequency equipment. There's something here, it's called voltage ripple. And that's how much it has to drop back down before coming back up. So how much drop in between. So single phase has 100% ripple because it has to go all the way back down to zero and then back up again, and it's bad. So 100% is bad. The next equipment that we got, three phase six pulse, fixed it a little bit because it added more pulses, so there was less drop. So now the ripple is only 14%. Three phase 12, again, we doubled those pulses to 12. It's only dropping 4%, and now your high frequency, it's dropping 1% or less. And so less ripple, the better. So I want you to remember single phase is 100, high frequency is one. We, what, we want the 1% because that's ideal, okay? All right, that's really all I do for circuit. Don't get wild about the circuit, okay? But I want you to find a picture and find more than one because they might look a little different. So look how these transformers appear in this picture. They're in the same location but they just look a little bit different as far as their shape and how the windings look. So this is still an auto transformer. It has one coil, but it looks like it has two sides. So it might look a little bit different to you. Okay, so this one has a, tri has a diamond shape rectifier, and this one down here is not in a diamond. So I would look at a couple things. They're in the same location. So could you draw it out? If you can't draw like me, find some pictures, print them out. Can you label the parts? If I asked you where it was, could you point it out? Can you tell me if they fall in the primary side or the secondary side or the filament? So you can see in this picture, it identifies it. So in the blue here, or the light blue, I should say, is primary or low voltage, secondary or high voltage side, and then the filament. Some of them just specify primary, secondary, and they don't um, specify the filament either. But if you're asked either way, could you figure it out? And then what is its job? What are you selecting there? What is it producing? What is it changing? If you can tell me all of those things, you can answer anything on the circuit. Don't go crazy and don't let the circuit stress you out. Not that bad. We know what it does, where it lives, and kind of what order it goes in. And if we can find it on a picture, you're all set. I hope that was helpful for the circuit.